We've been continuing to evolve our experiments around compost heating spaces like these high tunnels. Uh, and so now we have three separate spaces that are online with three different types of experiments. And I'd like to share notes with you after what has been a brutally cold and incredibly windy night. So stick around. We actually had a handful of days that were pretty mild this last week. A whole bunch of days that were above freezing and some of them even with good sun. And so we used that time to evolve some of our systems. But last night we just got walloped. It went down to 10 degrees Fahrenheit. There were 30 mile per hour winds, so the um, wind chill factor was down to negative 10. And so I'd like to take a look. Well, first of all, this is a little bit of an update or follow up on this high tunnel right along the road. And so what happened last night in here? Now this is definitely a work in progress. It's still experimental, but first order of business is how does this pile, this compost pile look? Well, what I see on top is some hoar frost, which tells me uh, that it was, the air was freezing above this. You can see little bits right there. It was freezing above this, but nice high humidity was coming out, which is telling me the compost pile itself was generating warmth. And so let's stick this in and just see where we are. We'll give that a moment to get up to full temp. But this uh, pile, which if you're not familiar with, I'll link right here to the video where I talked about this. Um, a little bit funky in that it's in suspension. It's hovering over. So it's decoupled from the earth. And for those of you that were interested, part of the reason why I wanted to do that, you can see why uh, water is now filled in underneath. So I can scoop. Part of the reason why it's gotten warm is I've been scooping water with a simple watering can from down below, pouring it on top and letting that soak through. So then you get compost tea leaching out at the bottom, which we can use for watering or to cycle back to trigger more warmth in this. And so this pile has now gotten up to, there you go, around 130 Fahrenheit, which is nice. A good radiation, a good, a good thermal buffer right there. Now the question though, there it is sitting on the side. I'm sure it has some impact, but what I've noticed is that this low tunnel on the south side. I've yet to have the time to dig out this seedling white oak. And so it was propped open last night. So very, very cold night, very heavy winds. With it propped open, it certainly crusted. And it crusted down about a half inch or so, just a little bit, but enough that it was a little tough on the plants here. Certainly the overwintering kales were just fine. Um, you can see some dew on there that froze. So cold but not too bad. On this side, the north side, which actually had the plastic down, on the very edges, it certainly crusted a little bit, but further in towards the center here, it actually didn't freeze at all. So I think the combination of having a huge pile of steaming debris on one side, just kind of creating a pillow of warmth in this space, coupled with a low tunnel that actually closed all the way down. We could have gone through and pinched the far ends with clips. We could have put a blanket on top. I think if we had a cold snap like that and we had, you know, seedling tomatoes or peppers trying to grow, we certainly would have done that. But to see that uh, with that intensity of wind and such a cold night, it didn't freeze the soil in the middle of this bed, that's pretty darn neat. It's certainly a little crusty here or there. One thing I'm definitely learning from this, okay, the really nice benefit to have a good hot compost pile on the side inside one of these tunnels. And we can, once this is really even and healthy, uh, smooth it out, put the hay on the sides for insulation, put some soil, and then that's where we'll start our tomatoes, our peppers, our basils, and have a really amazing hot source there. But I'd like to evolve the system so that this material, the heat from in there, is actually translated into this bed. And that's what our next experiment's about. So in our backyard here, same basic design, four panel, cattle panel, high tunnel, really simple, rugged, inexpensive way to build a small season extension space. I really love the basic idea here. Um, you can see I, well, one issue is that the door frame has shifted, so I need to repair that. It doesn't quite close now but a board will fix it in the short run. Very elegant solution. So if I come in here, you can see a similar but slightly different experiment. Now I documented this experiment, I think it was last year, 
uh, this, we're recycling this structure, which is a similar pattern to what's happening in the front where you've got a compost pile on the far west side in this case. And this one is not decoupled from the earth. It's just in the corner here. And this was filled with material. We went through, we had a friend, uh, Lily, a new person who came to help us out. Thanks, Lily. And we cleaned out the old compost that was in here, added it to another garden bed and replenish this with some very, very hot compost. Similar pattern to the one by the road. One uh, dump of super hot compost from the chicken yard, one of wood chips and hay as a nice bulking carbon to kind of extend the heat. And then yesterday I capped it with charcoal to absorb all the excess nutrients. And so this pile, I haven't actually done a temp probe on this one yet. Let me find a spot where I can get in. Go right to the center here. This one's younger than the one by the road, and so I would expect it isn't fully up to speed yet. And what's nice with the charcoal on top, um, yesterday when I went in here, it was really aromatic. It was kind of an ammonia smell. And now that there's all this charcoal on here, there's truly no smell. So that's a really nice filter, and it's getting charged with that steam. So not as hot. Right now we're just around 110, a little shy of but that's not insignificant. But where I think this is a nice upgrade is as this pile was being assembled, where you can see the legacy here, I ran a PEX circuit in a loop, half inch PEX, through this. And so now those are the two stubs. And on this side, this is the northern bed. Let me pause and open this up. Okay, so again, really nice, easy way to open these up. I really like this simple design of these scraps of poly laid out with uh, hammered in staves, some paracord. The far end is pinned down with some bricks and covered with soil to make an air seal. It's just so simple and the binder clips keep it open for sunny days. Uh, anyway, the, there's a PEX loop in the compost and you can see the stemming, the, the bits sticking out. I took a section of PEX that runs down. There's uh, four lines, so it runs down through here, comes back around, so in other words, there's four half inch PEX tubes that are buried about four to six inches below this soil. And so the question that I have now is I've got to figure out, I think what I'll do is take the far north end of this pile, move some material aside, put a 10 or 20 gallon relatively small water holding device in the compost so it's absorbing the heat and then have a circulator pump that connects these two somehow to that water and uses a solar panel and or a battery to take that 110 degrees of the internals of that and send it through all of this soil. I think if I had that set up last night, very, very easily this whole bed would have stayed well above freezing. As it stands, uh, the interior, similar to along the road, <clears throat> the interior of this bed, nearly completely frost free. I would say it just was above freezing. Some little pockets here or there froze. Part of that being I put a whole bunch of snow on here the other day just to slowly melt in, and I'm sure that created more coldness. Um, Sasha went ahead on the east side of this and started sowing out plants like lettuce. There's lettuce, there's chervil, cilantro, some uh, parsley, cold weather crops, and it crusted where they are, but I don't think that's going to kill them. Um, but I really want to get this updated, upgraded to having the hot uh, temperatures from the internals of that compost circulated and dissipated through the soil on these coldest nights. As you're looking at this video, if you've got some ideas of a particular system that makes sense to you, I'm all ears. I, I don't have a firm plan just yet. I'm leaning towards the idea of a 55 gallon plastic drum cut in half buried so that the top is nearly flush with the soil line uh, and having the pump in the water so that it doesn't freeze and break overnight. I've got a little circulator pump and then just plumbing this all together, uh, dipping into that water and plumbing it together so it's one contiguous loop. The other thing with that is on days that are very, very sunny, super hot and sunny in here under this plastic, the dark soil would be conferring heat to the pecs through it and circulating back. So dissipate and kind of like equalize the temperature between these two. I'm excited to see how that evolves. 
I want it to be solar based and simple overall, but a little bit of text, not too big a deal. I don't know how well it shows up, but there is steam pouring off the top of this that if only that was being drawn through tubes and into the soil would be really charging the space. As of now, it's just dissipating the heat into the air. And unfortunately, there's some little gaps here. There are 30 mile per hour winds with a gap like that. And you can see all the hoarfrost. It basically, it lost a lot of heat last night just to my poor engineering and random little gaps here or there. So the most efficiency would be to send all that internal heat into another internal space. In fact, a really telling sign, it's all these binder clips that were attached up at the height of this tunnel, to me, tell a pretty intense story. There was a lot of high humidity, um, warm air in this space, connect or hitting very, very cold air, which is why I was condensing and freezing on these. So to me, that signals that there was more moisture and heat up high in this space, which is fine enough. There's a good pillowing effect there, but with all these gaps, uh, it's, that's telling me I've, I've lost potential heat that could have been stored in the soil. And on the south side here, most of these are very cold hardy crops, so they can handle a bunch of freezes and thaws throughout the winter. Um, but you can see with none of that low tunnel protection, that crusted down an inch or two. So at the very least, those simple low tunnel poly runs in these sorts of spaces are incredibly beneficial for the coldest nights. And if I know we're gonna get another incredibly cold and windy night, I need to come to these far ends and use binder clips to pinch them shut so that air can't sneak through. Maybe we have a blanket on hold in the garage that we can toss over this. So those are some observations after a particularly cold and insanely windy night, really challenging in the late winter, early spring as we're trying to get things going. You know, we're getting tricked, so to speak. It's our own fault seeing days around 40 or 50 degrees Fahrenheit with sun. We think, oh, it's time to start seeds and then winter comes back hard again. Uh, but all of these buffering efforts and ways to store excess heat in the soil uh, undercover seems like it can go quite a long way. I'm gonna leave this video here. I'd love your feedback. Soon enough, I'll do an update on this, which is our greenhouse attached to our home. I've renovated our compost heating system here. This has a really nice PEC circuit through it, tons of insulation. And again, in the greenhouse itself, I've now run a PEC circuit through the soil, but that'll be for another day. Uh, for now, any notes you've got, ideas, questions, let me know. And hopefully wherever you are, you're weathering the storms that come through. Take care.